Hello everybody, welcome to my first tutorial video. I had a request on a previous video of mine, something showing off a uh, old project that I had been working on, and they were interested in the mechanics, the shooting, the firing, just kind of how everything was put together. So I figured I would put together a tutorial and kind of show off and showcase making something similar to this. So we got a little bit of recoil, double jumping, firing effects, uh, and uh, nothing too crazy, uh, but something that can be interesting. We've also got some enemies to fight. So yeah, let's get into it. In the project files and the content files of the project provided, uh, download will be in the description of the video. Uh, we have a few different folders of everything that we need to get started for this video. I do want to keep each individual video in the series relatively short, um, just going over a few uh, key features or core concepts through each one. So we'll uh, jump right into the tweaking the movement mechanics and getting to know the project as well as adding the weapon to the player character. So if we navigate over to the blueprints folder, you'll see that inside there's a components, a game mode, and a player. We want to open up the player folder. You'll see a character and a player controller. We currently want to access the AC underscore character. Inside of the AC underscore character, you'll see that there's already a tiny bit of movement code um, added to it. That's just for moving and looking around. Uh, an important thing to look at for this is the AC underscore camera sway. So what this is, is if we open this up, edit, it is a component that has uh, some functions in it that are exposed so that if we go to go to the camera sway in the AC underscore character blueprint, we can actually access the camera sway speed, the roll amount, the reset speed, and the time. Um, these will be important for tweaking the game to feel how you want to feel. And what that does is if we move left and right, you can actually see it's got that retro style camera sway to it. So you can adjust how far it tilts, how fast it resets back, um, and a couple other parameters there. So that is, uh, I think that's the most important thing to notate because not everybody likes the camera sway, but it is a, um, a staple of some of the retro style shooters. So what we want to do is we want to go here. In the project, I've already added a couple of um, elements to or components to the player here. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is the weapon socket. So this camera rotation and this weapon socket are spring arms. I can't say how underrated uh, spring arms are. They allow you to get a re really nice feel to your characters, uh, and if utilized in certain ways, you can get really, really nice uh, like little effects that just add a little bit of a motion to the screen. So with this weapon socket, what we want to do is we actually want to attach a weapon to it so that you get that um, kind of turn lag in your weapon. So what we'll do is with this highlighted, we hit Add Component, and we want to choose Skeletal Mesh. We'll name this weapon and hit enter. So it requires a skeletal mesh and you'll see that inside of the project I have already included a skeletal mesh. It's important to note that with this there already are a couple of sockets that are important moving forward through this project. So if we go to the character we can choose our SMG that we already have added. Now you can see that it is not rotated properly so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and rotate our weapon and we want to move it around to what looks like a good position on the screen. So we'll go through a couple tries here. Uh, the way I prefer might not be the way that everyone else prefers. So we'll take a look here. And the values that I came up with myself that I think look good for me are 67 on the X, 20 on the Y, and 30 on the Z. Let's go ahead and hit play. And we can see here that the gun is a little bit too high on the screen. 
So we can do our adjustments from here. Viewport. Let's say we move it a little bit over and a little bit back. We're getting closer. It's a little too high on screen, so let's drop this down. We could move the weapon socket, um, but the reason I don't want to move the weapon socket is because uh, this weapon socket has a probe size, which we can lower, uh, but we want to keep this probe, si probe size here because it will uh, detect collision on walls and if we get too close to the wall with this probe, this spring arm, it will do really weird... Um, it tries to move the weapon that's attached to it, or it tries to move the socket itself away from the wall so that there isn't any overlaps or um, improper collisions on the wall. So we want to keep this spring arm inside the player so that the gun doesn't shoot off in weird directions when we collide with a wall or an object. So let's go ahead and save that. Okay, I think I'm happy with that for now. Let's hit full screen. Yeah, that, that's pretty solid. Uh, so right now, it looks very, very static on screen. And one of my favorite things, or the main thing that the spring arm does, is it allows us to add a little bit of motion to that. So I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to go back into the weapon socket, and I'm going to go down to enable camera lag. I'm going to go ahead and tick that on, compile, save, and let's just test it, and then we can tweak our numbers from there, because everybody might be a little different. Uh-oh. Looks like the gun is moving around really, really wild. So what that is, is that inside of the character, in the spring arm, you have camera lag speed and camera lag max distance. So let's go ahead and l increase the speed. So the speed is how long it takes, or uh, how quickly that the spring arm is going to move to catch back up to the player once the player is moved. So we want to increase that. Let's go, let's go something really high right now. And we'll go to rotation lag. And we will, let's keep the rotation lag speed the way it is. So hit play. Uh, now you see that we're moving with the increased lag speed. It starts to stay a lot closer to the player. And now we have that extra movement on the rotation lag speed. That's not, doesn't quite look very nice or very polished. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to continue to adjust the values just a tiny bit so that it looks a little more proper. So I'm going to go ahead and get my values and I will share them with you guys. So what I've got is 30, 25, and 8. So let's go ahead and test that out. Yeah, so stays a little bit mm, closer to the player. Stays on screen so you can see the weapon at all times, but you still get that little bit of movement behind the character. So you, uh, you can adjust your values as you see fit, but we're going to go ahead and move along with this. So now that we've done that, um, one thing that we want to do because un, uh, the spring arm also allows for vertical movement as well in the, in the lag speed. So what we want to do is we want to add a jump to the player. So you'll notice I've only done movement and looking. So what we want to do is we want to add a jump variable. We need to go to the project settings. We want to go to input. We want to go to action mappings. And under action mappings, we want to add a jump input. So now that we've added the jump input, we can set the key value by hitting this auto detect, hit space, and now we can add it to space. So if we go back to the character, right click, and we do jump, we can look for our input action events, and we can click jump. All right. When we jump, we want to access the uh, the built-in function that Unreal provides called jump, called jump. So let's select that, input that, and hit save. Let's test it out. So now we have our jump, and you can kind of see what I was mentioning earlier with the camera lag. You'll see that the weapon 
you know, lags a little bit behind. So this default works, but you don't have a lot of control in the air when you jump. Um, and it's you don't jump very high. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go into our character movement and we want to adjust our values. So in the values over here, what we want to do is we want to look for 700. Our air control, uh, we want to be able to move around in the air and control our character in the air while we're moving. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set this to 1.25. This velocity right here will allow us to jump higher. We want to go to our boost velocity threshold and we want to bump that up to 35. And let's go ahead and compile and save. And let's mess with that. Uh, that's much cleaner, much smoother, much cleaner. So one thing that I like to do in my projects, in my games, uh, and you might not want this in yours, but we're going to move through with this uh, for this instance, is giving the player double jumps. I feel like it really adds the opportunity to have platforming in your game. Uh, so we're going to add a double jump to our character. So we want to hit escape. We want, we want to go to our AC underscore character blueprint. We want to type in or select the AC underscore character self and we want to type in jump. And you'll see here under the character tab, you have a jump max count. We want to bump that to two. And go ahead and compile and save. And now you'll see I get a double jump. Very easy. Unreal implements that for us so we can just utilize those tools. And now I can get over to this platform. That also means that I can get to higher ledges. So let's say I wanted to go from here to here. Boom, boom. There we go. And get across gaps. You can also increase your jump velocity. Uh, so let's say we wanted to get up there right now. We could increase our jump velocity so we jump higher on each jump. However, for this instance, uh, we're going to save that area for another aspect of the tutorial. So yeah, I think that uh, I think that covers the basics of adding movement to our character to today and we will see you next time whenever we implement the firing and the reload mechanics.